Laura. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the topic of my question was chosen by South Australian vo voters and is to the Minister representing the Minister for Agriculture and Water Resources. Today, the Senate agreed that the government should immediately respond to each and every recommendation proposed by the Murray-Darling Basin Royal Commission and Productivities Commission's review of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan. When will the government respond to each and every, rec each and every recommendation proposed by the Murray-Darling Basin Royal Commission and the Productivity Commission? Minister representing the Minister for Agriculture and Water Resources, Senator Canavan. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I thank Senator Story for his question and some advance notice uh, uh, of it. Um, uh, as I indicated yesterday, the government will be carefully—I think yesterday, this week at least—the government will be considering carefully the findings and recommendations of the Productivity Commission five-year review of the Basin Plan and the South Australian Royal Commission. In respect to the South Australian Royal Commission, it will take time to digest the 746-page report. However, the government has made clear its view that the Basin Plan has been made consistently with the requirements of the Water Act 2007. The South Australian Royal Commission was commissioned by the South Australian Government, and we would expect they will respond in due course. The South Australian Premier has requested that the findings of the Royal Commission be considered at the next Council of Australian Governments meeting. A meeting of Murray-Darling Basin First Ministers is expected to take place later this year. In respect to the Productivity Commission's final report, the government has indicated it will be developing a response uh, to it. It is appropriate the response the Productivity Commission has developed in consult close consultation with Murray-Darling Basin jurisdictions and communities, especially given many of the recommendations go to those to state and territory governments. The response will also be considered by the Murray-Darling Basin Ministerial Council. While as I've, I've looked through the Productivity Commission report, Mr. President, and there are some uh, useful I think, suggestions the government will consider. I think it is also important that we put on the public record other things that are often not highlighted from that report. For example, the Productivity Commission identifies that water recovery is now within 5 per cent of the July 2019 target. That while we might not exactly get there, that is a remarkable achievement given the ambition of the Basin Plan when it was set in 2012. The Productivity Commission also highlights that the arrangements for managing environmental water are working well with evidence of improved ecological outcomes at the local and system scale. In fact, the Productivity Commission did report on, I think, that there is something like 750 environmental watering events that have occurred just in the last five years, targeting specific environmental outcomes linked to the long-term objectives of the plan. Senator Storer, supplementary question. Uh, will the government proceed with the structural separation of the Murray-Darling Basin Authority, as recommended by the Productivity Commission, to prevent conflict of inf interest? Senator Canavan. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, well, as I indicated, the Australian government has yet to finalise its response to the, the specific recommendations in the Productivity Commission report. Um, we will uh, ensure that we consult with uh, Basin governments and other stakeholders about that recommendation, along with others, in particular in regard to the recommendation of uh, splitting the regulatory and, and, uh, and system management um, uh, um, functions of the MDBA. We recognise that any split in these functions would need to carefully consider the potential impact of such a move on key basin plan outcomes, including the assessment of water resource plans. We acknowledge that the committee places a high priority on ensuring effective regulation, compliance and enforcement of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan. The MDBA has recently established the Office of, the Office of Compliance sorry, to manage any potential conflict ar arising from its different roles. This office will continue to grow and evolve as the MDBA includes more regulatory functions. Senator Storer, a final supplementary question. Well, Minister, what is the point of legislating oversight of the operation of the Murray-Darling Basin Plan by the Productivity Commission if the government willfully ignores their recommendation? Senator Canavan. Well, Mr President, um, with all respect to Senator Storer, I, I reject that, um, that, uh, that view completely. Um, the government is uh, uh, taking seriously these recommendations. As I indicated, it's right and proper that we do so in a considered way, particularly given the successful implementation of any change from such recommendations, will require the cooperation and coordination with state and territory governments. I think it's also important, while I have this opportunity, Mr. President, that uh, we do recognise that the, plant, the basin is a diverse community of environmental, economic and social assets. As the Productivity Commission report points out, there are 30,000 wetlands in the Murray-Darling Basin, 100 of which are recognised as nationally important. Nationally important. That's why we're doing that more environmental watering through the plan, and great achievements have been made there. It is, of course, however, it is, of course, however, the uh, area which produces 41% of our of our agriculture. 41% of our food comes from the basin. The basin also supplies water to 2.1 million people who reside with it, and 1.3 million people outside the basin as well.